couple months back, I remember going through my game collection and I stumbled across a PlayStation 2 title that I remember playing a lot with my father nearly 15 years ago. The game in question had a logo on the cover, which I instantly recognized. That, of course, was the Midway logo. Immediately, I wondered, huh, whatever happened to Midway? I remember seeing that name all the time growing up. Thing is, I've never been the type to follow gaming news. I had no clue Midway went out of business nearly eight years ago. Ever since then, I've been thinking about making a rise and fall type series on video game companies, and I chose Midway to be the first on my small list of companies I'd like to cover. So with that said, everyone, let us delve into a company that was at one point one of the greatest video game publishers out there. Midway Games, originally named Midway Manufacturing, founded way back in 1958 by Henry Ross and Marcine Wolverton, based out of Franklin Park, Illinois, which is actually not too far off from where I grew up. Anyway, Midway Manufacturing started out producing coin-operated machines, like bat games, rifle games, racing, and of course the games that initially grew Midway into becoming a major player in the arcade market, pinball machines. In 1969, Midway Manufacturing had been purchased by Bally Entertainment, who at the time was a major competitor in the casino business, manufacturing slot machines. The 70s is when Midway started making arcade video games, and during the 70s, Midway actually had a pretty good relationship with the Japanese game company, Taito. In fact, the alliance between the two was so good that they would license off their games to each other so that they could be distributed between the two countries. For example, Taito released Speed Race, which Midway turned into Racer for the US, and Gunfight was actually an adaptation of Taito's Western Gun. This Midway adaptation was the first game to include a microprocessor, which the original Taito game did not have. This gave the game smoother animation as well as better graphics. Even though these arcade games were mostly a success, none of them had really taken off nearly as much as the 78-79 game Space Invaders. Thankfully for Midway, this was another Taito game that they allowed Midway to license and distribute in the U.S. As most of us, if not all of us know, Space Invaders was one of the most influential games of all time. Not only has it won a Guinness World Record for Top Arcade Game, it has also won the Game of the Year Award. Midway followed up their massive blockbuster hit of Space Invaders by licensing and distributing Namco's Pac-Man in the U.S. It goes without saying that Pac-Man was another huge success for Midway. Although, there was a bit of an issue. You see, Midway made their own unauthorized sequel to Pac-Man, known as Miss Pac-Man, in 1981. Namco? Well, they weren't too thrilled about this, claiming that Midway did not have the rights to make their own Pac-Man games. What ended up happening in this case is that Nam